Everybody knows that one of the most important resources for human beings is water. Now, throughout the winter, I had really easy access to reasonably clean water. Uh, there was snow everywhere, and I could melt that snow, and I could drink it. Now, the snow fell down through a polluted atmosphere, and, you know, it's not absolutely pristine, but it was pretty darn good, and it served me well. But now that the snow's gone, I need to get back to drinking out of things like streams, and puddles, and things like that, and I need to have a good way of purifying the water. I have been using uh, this little device a little bit, and this is in my bug out bag. Uh, it's a, a survivor filter. It's a, you know, one brand was called Life Straw that was pretty popular. Uh, the idea with these is that there's a little spout, you can put your mouth on the end, and you put it uh, into a container of dirty water or like, you know, even literally right down into a stream, and you can drink water out and it's going to filter it, uh, you know, as you're drinking it, and it can keep you from getting sick. The, so they're pretty convenient, but the downside is that they don't last that long. The, the actual filtering element in this is pretty small. It plugs up pretty quickly, especially if the water that you're drinking is, you know, not pristine. So uh, this is something that, while it's helpful, I need to have a better long-term solution to get lots of water, you know, clean for myself. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is building a large filter that is going to do some, uh, some basic filtering of water. It's not going to be good enough to uh, kill viruses and bacteria, or not kill, but trap, or you know, block viruses and bacteria. But it's going to take really dirty water and make it pretty clean, and then I'll be able to sanitize it the rest of the way on the fire. Uh, you might say, well, if you're going to have to boil your water anyway, why even bother with filtering it? Well, if you're boiling water, uh, you're going to be killing pathogens, bacteria, things of that nature that are in the water. But you're not going to eliminate things like chemical contamination. In fact, if you're boiling water and some of the water evaporates, you could actually be concentrating chemicals that are in there. So the filter I'm going to be building is something that's going to get rid of uh, particles that are in the water and get rid of uh, chemicals and things that are in the water. And then we'll get rid of the last of the pathogens by boiling it. The way that I'm going to be doing it is uh, by using a bucket. Uh, buckets are super useful. I, uh, you know, I can't say enough about them. From survivor caches to, you know, storing all sorts of different things, buckets are really, really, uh, you know, they're a wonderful asset. And it kills me. Uh, what I'm about to do with this one is I'm going to put a hole in the bottom. I'm going to be using this as the basic, uh, you know, form for my filter. I'm going to put one hole in the bottom. Uh, that's kind of a big decision because, you know, it's not like I can just run down to the hardware store and get another bucket, but. Uh, this is going to be a really useful uh, item, and it's worth sacrificing one bucket to do it. Uh, before I do that, I just want to mention I built a little stand here uh, that's beneath the bucket. Uh, this is to hold it up off the ground. You can't just have the bucket sitting straight on the ground. You need it held up because I'll be able to put a cup or a can or any kind of a container under here, and it'll catch the water that drips through. So I built this little stand to kind of keep it elevated up off the uh, ground here. So I'm just going to take a knife, and I'm making a small hole, maybe about eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch in diameter, just being very careful. All right, and the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to take this paper clip, which I've bent off to the side, and put it down through there. And what that'll do is make it so that when water does go through here, it doesn't just spread out on the bottom of the bucket. Uh, it'll act as a little drip guide to have the water drip straight down. Uh, the next step is that what I want to do is I want to uh, put some kind of a blockage so that uh, the particles that I'm going to be putting in here, which is going to be sand and charcoal, aren't going to be going straight down through that hole. So I want to take some kind of a stone, uh, and I've got a little stone right here, and I'm just going to place that right over the hole so uh, when the next layer that I put in uh, goes in, it doesn't, uh, you know, it's not going to wash right out through that hole. And the next layer that I'm going to be putting in there is some sand. Now, this is just river sand. I went down to a river bank and collected this. Now, obviously, this sand is not clean. <laughs> you know, I mean, it has all sorts of things in there. But as I'm flushing water through there, this is going to get better and better over time. Because this sand is relatively dirty, I decided I wanted to wash it off in the stream. I just put it down in some fast-moving, relatively clean water and flushed it around to try to get as much sediment and leaves and debris out of it before I actually put it into my filter. The next step is, I've got this bucket right here of the, all this sand. I'm going to pour that right in. I'm, I want to make sure that I don't dislodge my uh, stone in the bottom there. And I make a nice, nice bed of this sand right there. The next step is I want to take it and kind of uh, smooth it into kind of a concave shape. And the reason for that is that the next layer that I'm going to be putting into this uh, bucket 
uh, are uh, charcoal ashes from my fire. Uh, the charcoal is going to act as a kind of a chemical capture. Uh, if you ever looked at you know filters that you buy from the store, they always talk about having activated carbon in them. That's essentially charcoal that's treated with a chemical process to make more receptor sites for chemicals to bond to. Uh, I don't have that, but just having the ash from the fire is going to uh, you know go a long way to uh, you know capture a lot of the chemicals that are in there. Uh, when I say ash, what you're looking for is chunks of burned wood that's, uh, you know, charcoal all the way through. What you don't want is all the white stuff from the fire. The white stuff from the fire uh, is very caustic. Uh, you actually can use that to make soap. You, you mix that with water. There's some process that I don't know. Uh, you, and you mix that with a fat, and you can make soap with that kind of stuff. And it's, it, if you were running water through that, it would make your water very alkaline, uh, you know, maybe possibly dangerously alkaline. So you don't want to be getting any of that white stuff uh, from your fire. You just want the charcoals. And you can remove all that white stuff just by washing the charcoal and that's what I've done here. So I've got a bunch of charcoal and I'm gonna pour that right on top of the sand and make myself a layer of charcoal right there and then the next step is more sand. I'm gonna put some more sand on there. All right and I'm gonna spread that around. I'm gonna pack it down a little bit. Again, I'm making kind of concave uh, forms at the bottom so that it'll sort of direct the water towards the center because you don't want the water circumventing going along down these edges. So I'm gonna kind of mush that around like that and then do some more charcoal. I like to just layer it. Oftentimes when you see uh, filters, they talk about just having like one charcoal layer, but you know, if you have the ability to, why not have multiple layers of it? All right, so I've got that. And then I'm gonna be adding some more sand on top of that. Now, once this is all done, it's important to kind of flush the system through. And you wanna take as much clean water as you can. And by clean, I, I mean, you know, stuff that, you know, is as clean as you have available to you. And you wanna really flush through the system. And as you're catching it, you're gonna notice when the water uh, first starts coming out the bottom that it doesn't look clean. Uh, there's a lot of impurities. There's like little bits of silt and stuff that were mixed in with the sand. And that stuff is gonna start getting flushed through the system. Once you start running it long enough, you're gonna notice that the water gets cleaner and cleaner. And at that point, you know, uh, you're gonna start getting water that's actually, you know, serviceable that you can actually use out of the system. But it does take a little time of flushing, you know, uh, as much clean water as you can through the system. And again, uh, this uh, device here, this is going to remove a lot of parti uh, particulates from the water because the sand uh, layers are gonna, uh, you know, catch things like little bits of leaves, algae, all that kinds of stuff is gonna get trapped in that sand layer. The charcoal is gonna be catching, uh, you know, any chemical impurities that might be in there as well as other physical impurities. I mean, let's face it, the charcoal, you know, is gonna act as a physical barrier as well. Uh, and uh, once the stuff gets out of the bottom, you should be pretty good on both those fronts. But biologically speaking, bacteria could easily go through here, even, uh, you know, uh, protozoa, things of that nature, could make their way down through. So I'm gonna take an extra step and I'm gonna be boiling the water over the, uh, uh, over the fire here to make sure that if I'm gonna be uh, drinking it, consuming it in that way, that it's safe for me. But that said, if I'm uh, filtering water through here and I wanna use it for uh, sanitary purposes, hygiene and all that kind of thing, uh, this is gonna make that water that much cleaner. And if you don't feel like you have to boil it because it's just gonna be used externally, then you don't have to worry with, uh, you know, mess with that step. So this is gonna be a very useful asset for me. It's gonna give me access to way more water than I was getting just by using a life straw. And there are other ways of building these as well. I'm using a bucket because I had uh, available to me. Other people uh, I've seen use cloth where you, uh, you know, have bags of cloth and they kind of layer over each other and one drips into the other. Like you'll have a, a, a cloth that's holding sand and then a cloth that's holding charcoal and another cloth that's holding sand. There's all different types of variants. In fact, I, I have seen some traffic cones and I was almost thinking, I wonder if I should grab one of those traffic cones and I could you know, pack all this stuff into the traffic cone and it would you know, direct all the water down. There are so many different variants on it, but the basic idea is you wanna get this dirty water being pushed through sand, charcoal, sand again, and repeat that as often as you can to get it cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. When I'm sourcing my water for running through the filter, I like to try to grab it from the cleanest source that I have available. This pool here is pretty good because it's reasonably deep, so a lot of the particulates have already kind of settled out of the water. 
and while there's certainly going uh, to be biological contamination in here and we definitely need filtering, we're starting out with a cleaner product, so all the better for our filtering process. As you can see here, the wa whoa! Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.